Jackie asked me to put together a, a few thoughts about the origins of Inland, some stories about Grandpa, some stories about my dad, um, just things in general. And she's joining me today because she's going to keep me both honest and on task. Um, so uh, in the future, what I'd love is if there's some things that any of you out there are wondering about, we'd love to have them. So if, again, if any of this sparks some questions that you've had, please make sure that you get them into us through In The Loop and I'd be happy to address whichever ones I can in future videos. With that, I think, Jackie, welcome. Thank you. Um, I think the first thing you wanted me to talk about today mm -hmm. uh, was just kind of how did it start? How, how did Grandpa, yeah. right? How did Grandpa John, okay. So let's start with Grandpa John. So my Grandpa John, 1944, right? Mm -hmm. World War II is raging, Detroit, Michigan. That's where my grandfather, John, lived. Uh, with his family, which included my dad, Jack, but um, not a great place to live at that time in 1944 and only getting worse. Uh, my grandpa was a print broker and he had, uh, he actually had a supplier in the Cross, Wisconsin. Funny enough, it was not Inland. Uh, but my grandpa in 1944 was in La Crosse, again commented how much he loved the area, and the owner of the printing supplier that, that supplied my grandpa with some of his printed products said, well, John, you're luck. Uh, the gentleman down the street at Inland is uh, for sale. And so my grandpa walked down, the, he walked down the street, uh, met the man and started negotiations and a few months later bought the business. So in 1944, um, I was proud to say that my grandfather moved his family from Detroit, Michigan to La Crosse, Wisconsin. Um, and we started, uh, the Glendening family began uh, of, you know, 75 years of owning and operating Inland Printing. And uh, I got to grow up a Packer fan instead of a Detroit Lions fan. Right? Ask, that was that yeah. was that was absolutely <laughs> going to be thrown in there. Right. Um, the you know the great thing about Grandpa John was the fact that again being a print salesman a broker if you will uh, the customers were critically important to him. So you know I always like to say that Grandpa John was the founder of our mission, yeah. which is customer delight. It, you know and, and again we've got more than that today, but it really boils down to customer delight partnership, and and that was really Grandpa. Um, I wanted to bring in, you know, you talk, well, say, give me a funny story about Grandpa John. Yeah. And before I get to that, I, I wanted to bring up something that very few people at Inland will even know about. And that's the fact that my other grandpa, so Grandpa Herb, okay. my mom's father, uh, actually worked at Inland. I did not know that. Absolutely. Very few people do. I counted five people, including myself, who would know that what Grandpa Herb do? worked. He was a janitor. And so my grandpa retired. He was the pro production manager at PepsiCo okay. in La Crosse. Yep. And that's right across from West Avenue, yeah. right? That's, so they used to actually make soda in that facility. And my grandpa was the, the manager of making soda over there. Which, by the way, when your grandfather in the 60s, when your grandfather <laughs> yeah. was the manager of a soda company and you could get all the free soda you wanted, he was God right. to us. But anyway, so your he... Your house was the place to be. Uh, my house was the place to be. <laughs> He retired, got extremely bored, was looking for something to do, and so my, my dad said, well, if you want, we have a need for a janitor. Huh. I will tell you he was the best janitor we ever had. Probably. I know that. I know that for a fact because I followed him. So my senior year, um, my senior year after after my senior year, that, that summer, Grandpa Herb was, was getting too, really too old to do, yeah. to do the job. So I took over. I didn't know that either. I, I took over as janitor. So your first official job was as the janitor. No, well, I had other official jobs. Oh, you I guys would, worked on the yeah. The this binary. is before yeah. OSHA. I had yeah. some other jobs. Yeah, before before OSHA rules that, that uh, um, don't pertain today. Yeah, I've had other jobs. Yeah. Then. But so this was one of my first official jobs, and I still remember for like the first month, hearing, that's not. <laughs> heard that over and over again but you know it, it was great because grandpa was he was just an absolutely outstanding janitor awesome. and you know it put pressure on me to to really right. put it out there and, and be a good janitor myself so when you're cleaning out urinals it's really tough to be overly you know full of hubris and other right. things yeah but anyway so both grandpas worked in the business so the funny story that I wanted to yeah. say was that my both grandpa John and grandpa Herb were both really really good guys they loved each other's company. So we get together for family occasions. They also really like beer and, and maybe a Manhattan or two. Okay. So uh, as they would have a beer or two, jokes would start to fly, stories would start to fly, and then they'd have another beer. And the stories would get funnier, the jokes get funnier. <laughs> At least 
That was to everybody except for two people, and, and those were my grandmothers. Uh, they didn't think it was quite sure. as funny, but both both really, really good guys. So there's my funny story about, about Grandpa and John. Um, you also asked me to talk about dad, mm -hmm. right? And so obviously my dad grew up in the business like, like most family members do on any small company. Uh, dad grew up in the business. Um, he was first one in our family, entire family on either side to go to college. That's cool. So my dad went to college. Where did he go? He went to the University of Wisconsin mm -hmm. until he got kicked out. And then he went to, he didn't get kicked out, but he went to lacrosse then for a year. And then went back and, and actually spent two years at Madison and graduated from, from Madison. There you go. Yep, there you go. So he was interviewing with some you know larger companies, pretty excited about opportunities. And my grandfather said, oh, geez, I really would like you back in the business, Dad. Jack, we talked about this. I really would like you back in the business. And my dad finally relented and uh, did come back into the business, which is great for all of us. Right. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about why. Yeah. Uh, but I know it was, you know, it, it, it really bothered my dad that he never had that experience at a different company. Sure. And what would that have brought? You know, would we have grown faster, better, whatever. But uh, dad, he, he did just fine. Um, he, he did a great job. Um, you know, we talk about my dad, and, and again, he came into the business with big dreams, right? So grandpa was pretty happy just to have a nice little business. Yeah. My dad was not going to be satisfied with that. So right. dad really came in. He was the one who really drove that, that dream of growth, yeah. right? Which that dream became our vision. Right. So growth for customers, growth for employees, and, and growth for communities. Mm -hmm. That was, that's my dad. You know, and, and it, it took me a while. I, I often forget, but my dad taught me a hell of a lot about business. Oftentimes, he was teaching me things and I didn't even realize it. Sure. And, and one of those things I, I, I always remember, when I felt like I was having a bad day at Inland and would complain to him, uh, often he would stop me, look at me and go, Mark, you don't know what a bad day is. Here's a bad day or here's a tough day. Tough day is making a sale in the morning and then in the afternoon, begging a supplier for the supplies to actually do that job. He goes, that's a bad day. You know, and, and the case in point being, yeah, that, that, that's a tough day. And the cool thing about what dad did is he took us to a point where that was never an issue for me. I never had to worry. I, you know, we yeah. could go out and sell. We didn't, I didn't have to worry that we were not going to have the supplies yeah. because he really built a, a really strong foundation, a really strong financial foundation. Yeah. So that, that's, the, that's my story about dad. And, and we're really lucky because he just, like I said, he created just a yeah. heck of a foundation for us. You know, and we talk, we'll talk a little bit, I, I think, in the future, maybe sessions of this about some of the technologies and, and things he took us into. But sure. he was a great teacher and, and created a great business. Um, so then you kind of talked about, well, you know, how did I, I get here? And, and you know what, talking about well, yourself is really... janitor first. Well, janitor, but talking about yourself is really boring. So I've got a better story. And it's just, <laughs> funny enough, it just happened today. So my dad was in. I saw him, yeah. You saw him, good. And so we were, ha we were having a meeting, and uh, all of a sudden uh, there was a knock at the door. So we were in the boardroom, and, and there was a knock at the door. And I'm like, well, geez, I didn't think anybody got the right. boardroom. Um, I said, come in, and in come Trent and Brad. Wow. So my two boys come yeah. in and they said, Grandpa, how are you doing? We heard that you were in the building and we just wanted to come by and say hi, which was very nice of them. Nice. They got that from their mother, not from me, but, <laughs> um, but it was, you know, it, it means a lot to Grandpa. Mm -hmm. And so after they were done chit-chatting with Grandpa a little bit, uh, the boys walked out and my dad turned to me and he said, I never thought I'd see that. You're two boys in this business. I never thought I would live to see that. Wow. And that was, yeah, it got me kind of choked up and, and that's pretty exciting. And um, it got me thinking about the question you would ask me, you know, um, what gets me excited about the business, yeah. right? Well, why am I excited about the future of Inland? Yeah. And, and so that, that incident with Dad got me thinking about an incident that I, was kind of like that, that I had. And it was 2008, we had okay. just, uh, sitting here yeah. they are, yeah. right, we had just Finished. Well, we had just we, the press was up and running. We had moved some uh, finishing equipment over, and if you remember, we had an open house. Yep. And we allowed everybody from West Avenue because yep. so few people from West Avenue were working up here. Yep. And we also invited a bunch of retirees and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, and then some family members. So my uncle came. Okay. And my uncle walked through, and after the tour, he came over to me and said, "Mark, your grandpa John would not believe what what your dad Jack and you have built." And I thought, that's pretty cool, yeah. right? That's pretty cool. It, but, but now, 10 years later, 
I walk around sometimes, and, and now I'm walking around, you know, not just with Alga, but AR, but also now Downingtown yeah. and, and uh, Nina, and it's like, holy crap, look what we have. Yeah. Like when I walk people around AR, I, 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 I talk about, you know, the Prinex system and how it connects into the XLs and the fact that guys can, you know, if there's a plate issue, and then the operators can order a new plate right from the plate room and all that other stuff. And we, we got technology and things that I never thought I'd see in my lifetime, and that's, that's pretty cool. Right? Well, even if you give someone a tour, just how complimentary they are about, this is the cleanest manufacturing facility I've ever been in, or your employees are just so excited about what they're working on and want to share what they're doing as Absolutely. people go through. It's us. It's fun to give a tour. It is fun. And yesterday we had a group of eighth graders yeah. from Independence, Wisconsin yeah. come through and who thought it was one of the coolest things they'd ever seen. I heard they were cheering on the press operators. I heard they were cheering you, numbers. Carl Faust. I heard yeah. they were cheering you. <laughs> we'll be talking. Yeah. Um, it's a great story. Uh, but that is really heartening to see kids come in here, you know, where they've probably been taught that manufacturing is this dirty, muggy, gross yeah. place to work yeah. and, and say, holy smokes, that's really cool stuff. And you, know, you think about it, our presses are like video games. I mean, they've got a lot of those same components. So, well, yeah, it's it, all brand new, right? It is brand new. You it, picture a manufacturing place of old, old rusty, right. gross stuff and everything in Not air conditioned, yeah. dirty, grimy, yeah, yeah, you bet. So anyway, I thought to myself, you know, so here we are 10 years later, right? Or a little over 10 years after 2008. And, and now I'm that person. I'm, I'm my my grandfather. I, I can't believe what we do. And and then you know, hearing my dad talk about how excited he is to see the boys in the business, man, that, that, that's what that's what gets me really, really excited about the future. I mean, we just got. I mean, our, our future is unlimited. I am so excited. Um, I just can't tell you how excited I am about the future. Yeah. I think I did. So. Uh, so I think it would be fun if. Other people submitted questions, I maybe, because you've got a whole bunch of good stories and things. I'm sure you're dying to share with all of us, but uh, there's a few things I'm not. Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, and, and I would love. You know, we've had so many people that have been with us a, 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 a long time, and or came from different places. Uh, if there's questions you have about us, about Inland, about anything, I'd love to hear them and love to try to be able to answer them. However, if we don't get any questions, I have prepared about 469 pages of material. So don't worry, don't fret. If you don't have any, not a big deal. But if you do have some, we'd love to hear from you. Agreed. Great. And make sure they check in the loop because there's going to be prize winners on the daily. Some and good pictures, stuff. right? Photos. Pictures, we're we're yeah. also interested. If you've got old photos, yeah. please get them in. Yeah. Um, no compromising stuff, though, please. <laughs> But we're going to be celebrating all month. All month. Because, it's, as we've discussed, we aren't exactly sure the exact date that Grandpa we're not. purchased. We're not. Business. So we're we really, Yeah, we never June. found those records. Yep. Um, so we're just going to go with the whole month. We never found those records, and the dad was six years old. And I think <laughs> Couldn't remember. That memory's not so good anymore. Yeah. <laughs> no. But anyway, thanks for joining us, guys. Yeah, thanks. We'll see you soon.